day to all tuning into Christ Jesus is Lord Ministry. I want to welcome you back to another time of Bible study coming to you from the Word of God. Here we are not here. Some fables are fallacies. We are not just taught. We are substance. And if it cannot be backed by the Word of God, if it's opinion, we'll state it clearly that that's just our opinion and not the Word of God. But we are not here to teach opinion or to share opinion in the word of God. Where the Bible speak, we speak, and we're silent, we will be silent. Today's topic will be how the law of God will work for us. Let us pray. Father, I give you thanks for all those tuning into Christ Jesus' law ministries. I want to bless your name for them, their lives, and I pray you'll continue to bless and keep them and help them to be obedient to your laws and commandments so that they can receive the blessings and the law can work in and on their behalf as you have set them in place from the foundation of the world. Father, I pray you'll be with me and let your Holy Spirit guide me and that I will preach your word effectively and teach it so that people can understand it and know it and do what it says according to your Holy Spirit who is the truth and who will lead us into all things. Father, continue to be with Christ Jesus in our ministries. I pray that you will forgive the haters. I pray that you will forgive the witchcraft practitioners and all the fighters. And I pray, dear Father, that you will bless and keep them with the truth. And I pray that you will send them your word, which will lead them to repent that they will accept you with this in faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. I pray. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 15, 21. Verse 21. Is a powerful spiritual law given to all of us who will walk in the principles of Deuteronomy 21 to prove. I'm passionate about God's amazing and powerful life changing word because it is just, it is honest, it is a true word that will work for absolutely anyone who will dare to change his mind and come in agreement with the principles and laws of the living God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2, 3 tells us that we should be transformed into the renewing of our mind. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 4, verse 1, who tells us that if we obey the commandments of the Lord, God, will set us an eye and who the 14 tells us of the blessing and the protection that we will receive when we activate the law, the commandments of God. You do not have to know anyone famous nor have any titles or degrees attached to your name. You just need to have a chain mind and be willing to follow God in the way. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. Again, I must remind you that God is talking to his people in the above law. The ones that are faithfully serving him in spirit and in truth, according to John 4, 24, it tells us God is a spirit. They worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. He's speaking to the obedient ones who are activating the law of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 2, which I've just read. He's speaking to the ones who are forgiving and blessing those who are fighting them spiritually or physically. According to Matthew 5, 44, which says you must forgive those who hate you and do you wrong. And Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32, likewise. God is talking to his people who are actively calling sin by its right name and activating the law of James chapter 1. Verse 22 2 to 25, which tells us that we should be doers of the word and not to see us. For if any be a hearer and not a doer, just like a man would behold his face in a natural glass, and then he gone his way, but he does not remember what manner of man he is or what he looks like. But whosoever will look into the perfect law of liberty and be a doer, that man shall be blessed. So we see that the law of God is a law of liberty, it gives freedom, it sets the captive free, it shows us right from wrong, and it shows us that what will happen to us if we are disobedient to the law of God. We're going to be enslaved by sin and taken captive by Satan. And if we are obedient and we adhere to the law of God, 
then the blessing according to Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 3 to 14 will overtake us and all the other blessings throughout scriptures know that we have an understanding of who God is talking to in our portion of scripture of Jeremiah chapter 15 21 likewise Deuteronomy 28 1 to 2 we will continue to allow the Bible while we listen to the absolute truth. Because many times we think we can just come to the Lord of God and claim the right to them without repentance or an understanding of what and who they are talking about. Many of us believe that we can play in sin one day and access righteousness the next day because no one knows about our sin. So we think Second Chronicles 69 says, the eyes of the Lord run to one foe to other to show himself strong to all those who are obedient to him. Now, God's powerful eyes are always on his universe, including your life and what you are doing behind closed doors. There are vast amount of wicked people today who are making claim to the law of Jeremiah 15, 21. They totally have forgotten that once any one of us is not walking in obedience to the laws of God, we are classified as being the wicked, and the powerful rise to this law is not ours. I need to inform us that there are only two classes of people on the earth, the wicked and the righteous. They who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, and his atoning sacrifice are considered to be righteous. They who have not accepted him are considered wicked. Because if they should die, they're going to be burned in the lake of fire and brimstone. When Jesus comes the second time and the wicked and the devil and his angels are being destroyed. God is not looking at the amount of times you return the time and the offering. Or serving the church, how many sermons you have given, how many people you have baptized. You're not looking at how many boxes of lunches are working in the soup kitchen or clothes you have donated. He's looking at your heart. He wants to know if your heart is in love with him because if it is, no doubt you will gladly activate the law of John 14 15. You will keep his commandment. John 14 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandment. I will remind us that God does not have to speak another word forever because his powerful Lord, our one, is speaking for him. He has set them in motion from the foundation of the world. So if we activate them, they will work for us. If we go against them, they will work against us. Many times I would hear church people say, if God could just touch on me or if God could just bless them. But the truth is, these people, even though they go to church, they are clueless as to how God operates. They have absolutely no idea that God operates through His divine laws. God made it clear as to what we should do to get whatever we want from Him. So the Bible said, God is not a man that He should tell a lie. Neither is He the Son of Man that He should Repent. Take, for example, the powerful law of Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 to 2, which speaks of blessings and protection. If you understand the principles of this law, you will never again waste any more time praying for blessings and protection because the law will make sure you will be blessed and protected once you activate it in your life. The same goes for the law of healing found in Isaiah chapter 58, 7 to 8. And it tells us that, Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou see it the naked, and thou cover it, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, the glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. In other words, it will be your rear guard. Real reward means rear guard. So God is saying that you need to help 
the less fortunate. Help those who are in need. Don't turn a blind heart. And then expect that God is going to bless you and you going to give you good health. And why many of us are healing is in the helping of other people who are less fortunate than us. And God put those people in our way for us to bless them and refuse to bless them. And then we expect we to be healed. That's why so many of us are healing. Mm -hmm. Where the Lord will be your protection, He will watch over you and watch you from the back. You do not have to hire anybody to walk your head back or to watch your back. In the same breath, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 21, is no different. God is telling us the righteousness of Jesus Christ that He will deliver us out of the hands of the eater, the witchcraft practitioner, the wicked, and the evil. Words. And Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 tells us about the wicked and who they are. If we are his, if we are observing and doing all his commandments, according to Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1 through to verse 2, it is imperative for us to understand the principles of scripture. God will not go against his laws to work for you or me if we are disobedient to his laws and commandments. Please note that Satan will have the right to anyone who is going against God's laws without genuine repentance. However, if we confess and genuinely repent of our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. According to 1 John 1 verse 9, the word of God is the greatest weapon of deliverance. There are certain scriptures that can be used as weapons for your deliverance from bondages of all types, whether sickness, poverty, confusion, hardship, witchcraft, and its wicked system and the practice of sin. However, the first step is to have the spiritual knowledge for your great deliverance. Proverbs 11 verse 9b says, By knowledge shall the just be delivered. And the next is to activate the law of John 14, 15 in our heart. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Many people try to manipulate God, not knowing that God does not manipulate and neither can he be manipulated. They are very foolish people. They are very foolish people. These people, they are stupid because it is impossible for you to manipulate God to get your healing, wealth, and prosperity. God will give according to what we are sowing. According to Galatians 6 verse 7, he says, Be not mocked, God is not deceived. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man so that shall he also reap. I'm not talking about the demonic gospel of sowing your monies for healing, miracles, and prosperity. I'm not dealing with that. I'll deal with that another time. God is looking at the part of you that cannot pretend. He's looking at your mind, your heart, to see if it is pleasing to him before you can get the healing and the blessings of prosperity. According to 1 Samuel 16 verse 7, which says God does not look at the heart. 1 Samuel 16. Are many because of their curve, they can't do speaking of female men because of muscles and their height and their, their structure and how they look. They think that God can be deceived by them. They may deceive other people. They may think that because of how fancy they dress and the expense of their clothing, how well they speak, or how learned they are. And how many sermons they are preached or people they are baptized. 
are the good that they have done. But I'm here to let you know that God is a God who is just. As I close, I will remind each of us that it is God who delivers and it is God who blesses and heals us. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 21 is a deliverance law, but will and can only work for those who love God. I am therefore encouraging us to study God's word according to 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us into the understanding of what the scriptures are saying because so many dirty wicked eyes people are trying to claim these deliverance laws in their spirit and they are haters and the enemies of God and if someone hates God and is an enemy of God don't think that person can be a friend of yours unless you are an hater of God and an enemy of God because the Bible said two cannot walk unless they agree. Amos 3 and verse 3. Just know that these powerful deliverance laws will work against you rather than for you if you do not repent and genuinely change your wicked ways. Now, this is a final text that uh, if you do not desire it, are ready to live a holy life and walk in the laws and commandments of God. Do not seek deliverance because you're going to be in serious trouble. So if you do not desire to live a holy life, do not seek deliverance because the evil spirit that has been cast up by your life, they're going to come back and they're going to take seven more wicked than themselves and come and dwell in you according to Christ's word, and your last state is going to be worse. Many of you are not delivered from it because you are not ready to live a holy life and be obedient to God's laws and commandments. And when you pray and ask God for the deliverance from certain things, God in his mercy do, do not, God does not rather, answers your prayer. Because if he does answers your prayer, then, this is what is going to happen to you in, according to Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. Your latter hand will be worse than your first. So it is because of his mercy, as Jeremiah says in Lamentation, that we are not conceived. I pray. And I hope and trust that this message has been a blessing to you. And I hope that you will see to live a holy and righteous life. And will not mess around with your soul salvation for the coming of Christ in you. All the signs around us in this world are showing that the Bible is true. And things are wrapping up in quick succession. Prophecies are being fulfilled coming of Christ is at the door. So my friends, make your calling and election sure as the apostle says. Do not gamble with your eternal life because the lake of fire which burneth with brimstone is real. And it will be when God comes back to earth the second time with the redeemed after the thousand years and you will be destroyed and the devil and the wicked, if you are not living an obedient life. I bless you as you seek to change your mind and make God your master and friend. Like, share, leave a comment, subscribe. Let me know how these messages are helping you, are being a blessing to you. And if there is any subject that you would like me to make a presentation, please feel free to send me a message, whether by the email or under a comment of one of these videos. Now, let us pray. God, I pray for all those who are in the hearing of my voice. I pray 
that your will will be done in their life, that they will seek to be obedient to your laws, your commandments, so that they'll be blessed and protected. Father, I pray that you will help us to understand that our soul salvation is important and we should not gamble with our soul salvation. I pray for everyone who has been part of this channel and who are supporting this channel. And I pray that you will continue to be with them as they seek to receive the necessary and relevant knowledge from your word, understanding, and know how to live a good and God-fearing life in this wicked world. Father, continue to bless and keep us and protect us, Lord, with your righteousness as we seek to be obedient to your laws. Help us to activate your laws so that we will be protected, we will be blessed, and we will not be deceived or manipulated by him or seek to manipulate him. Thank you, Lord. For you is pure according to Psalm chapter 6 and as silver tried in a furnace of fire, purified seven times. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now have a wonderful and productive day. God bless you all. Stay safe.